I had heard about NFC and I didn't really know how to use it. So I was very curious and interested in using the technology. I had heard about a few things in the past. For example, you know, I was able to pay my, um, my bills at restaurants with Apple Pay or Google Wallet. And then I also saw something that interests me a lot. So there was, there are a few games that you can unlock memorabilia in games if you purchase a product. And then uh, like Nintendo Wii had something called Amiibo. You purchased um, this, you know, a certain, uh, a certain toy and you would be able to unlock it in the game. And then you, you guys must have heard of the Fire Festival. Um, the one that never really happened. They had sold these bands that essentially had NFC, which you could use to pay with. And so it was supposed to be a secure way so that you didn't really have to carry cash and you know, you'd be able to make transactions and it would be safe. And then I read up about it and I was like, okay, that's interesting. How exactly does security work with our, you know, NFC tags? And then I learned that with the help of mobile phones, you can actually make it very secure. And what they really are are like minuscule flash drives where you can store very tiny bits of information. And, you know, you can either read or you can write from these NFC tags. <clears throat> However, um, you can also permanently write to them so that at that point they only read they can only be read from so it's kind of useful for identifying certain products that are being shipped for example so you know there are quite a few uses so now the question was okay i know you know i want to try to get into it um but i didn't know what to look for so i found this presentation that was not very old it's from october the 4th 2019 which is pretty recent. And so they have uh, basically explained whatever uh, was new that came out in iOS 13, and they compared it with Android. And what I learned is that starting from iOS 13, you can actually start writing to a lot of these um, NFC tags as well, which is awesome. And so it's very new technology from that point of view. And... As you can notice, they also started supporting so many different other tags, apart from just NDEF tags that um, that were being supported before. Also in this presentation, I found that they compared iOS compatibility with Android compatibility and found that um, there are these tags that are supported by both iOS and Android, so we are safe to purchase any of these tags. And now I was like, okay, you know, I want to buy these tags. I know what kind of tags I want to buy, but is my phone going to be able to support it? So I checked this out and I have an iPhone 8. And so I was able to see that using an iPhone 8, you can indeed write as well as read from NFC tags. So that was great. So I'm all set over there. <clears throat> so then I tried to look on the Android side. And what I noticed is a lot of new phones. So I had purchased the Redmi 8 which is relatively new, very popular. Even though it's new and NFC technology is pretty old on Android, a lot of these phones do not support NFC technology still. Luckily, uh, I did have, I was able to get my hands on one Pixel. I think it was a Pixel or Pixel 2. And that had NFC technology. So I was all set over there. Perfect. Now, what I did is I went to this popular Chinese electronics store, which is which is pretty popular with uh, tinkers and you know people who play with robotics, and I searched for um, smart RFID tags, iOS, something like that, and so I was able to find these three different products, and as you can see, they're super cheap. Um, for three US dollars, you can get 10 pieces. And, you know, they're essentially just stickers. This type is just a sticker, very tiny. You can just stick it anywhere. As you can see, you know, it's just three centimeters in diameter. And there's so many applications where you can use it. <clears throat> you can even send it as, you know, send your business card through it. So pretty, pretty cool. 
a lot of really cool uses. And then, um, you know, the same product, just in a different style, uh, they showed me that you can have like a ring. It's an intelligent ring. So it's supposed to be the same thing. I purchased this, but I wasn't able to make this work with the sample app. I was able to get it to work with a different Android app. Uh, the sample app is what we're going to go through today. And then the third product I purchased was these um, key rings, essentially. And so after a long wait, because I chose free shipping, so I didn't really have to wait for the coronavirus sanitization of these products because it would have already been dead. I finally got them. And what I did is, just like any madman, I googled Xamarin Farms NFC. The first thing I stumbled upon uh, was, you know, obviously Core NFC, which is Xamarin.ios. So it's it's not Xamarin Forms essentially. And then, you know, I saw a bunch of forums and things like that. But the the first thing that I saw was that, uh, you know, was perfect for Xamarin Forms was this NuGet package. So I clicked on it, and if you see, the second thing is actually the GitHub repository for that NuGet package. So I clicked on it. I go over here and I see that it was updated just two months ago, which is amazing. So it probably supports everything that, you know, iOS, the iOS changes that came out as well. <clears throat> so now I was trying to look for a sample. And so I just went into the source repository. And amazing that Frank Boer, uh, thank you so much, Frank Boer, if you ever watch this video. He, in his uh, GitHub repository, he placed a sample over here. So this was definitely something that I wanted to clone. So I just, you know, hit clone, open in desktop, you know, it, it opened in GitHub desktop, and I was able to download it. And if you look for it in my documents folder, you'll see uh, it's right there. I just opened the plugin.nfc.full solution. And as soon as it opened up, I just came over here and, you know, chose the iOS configuration, debug iPhone, and hooked up my iPhone to it. I did have certain issues, um, and I will briefly talk about it. For iOS, if you want to build it on an iPhone, it'll give you an error saying that you don't have the right profiles with uh, the entitlements and so um you know all i had to do was just go in over here and this may not work for you but i already went to the developer portal for apple and and enable this entitlement for my app that i'm working on so i just hit enable and then i changed the bundle id to the app that i'm working on and then uh you know i was able to build it and it worked successfully i was able to launch it <clears throat> but if you are not able to, um, oh yeah, so if you if you build it on, on an iPhone simulator, it will build without you having to make any changes, but it'll obviously say that NFC is disabled. Um, if you don't have the privilege of having an Apple account, you can um, go in to, you know, this link, and I'll put it in the browser below, that says testing on device with free provisioning. So you just follow these instructions and make sure that you enable entitlements for NFC and uh, you know you should be able to deploy it from uh, Visual Studio thereafter. Perfect. So now <clears throat> um, let me show you so you know once I built it I'm going to show you what it looks like on my actual iPhone. So this is my iPhone uh, that is that I'm, I have in my hand, and I have two of these tags next to me. Okay, so I'm going to bring the keyring tag, and I'm going to do a read command. So I'm, I have to tap on the read button on the on the sample app, and as you notice, it says ready to scan. Please hold your phone near an NFC tag. I'm going to bring it close to it, and ta-da! It says tag read operation successful, and it has read the data inside the NFC tag. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the data into a URI form of data. So I bring it close, 
tag write operation successful. Perfect. And then I read the tag. So it should show a different uh, piece of information, which it does. So it shows you his uh, GitHub page, essentially. Hit cancel. Perfect. And I can do the same thing with um, the stickers. So I bring the sticker close. I say read. And it says tag is empty because it is empty. OK, perfect. Now, uh, moving forward, I can't. I didn't want to mirror an Android as well, though I could have. But um, for Android, the difference that you will see is that it doesn't have that dialog that pops up. And so it's important to show a label that says listening. Um, do I have a picture? I, I'll show you a picture of it in a little bit. Here. Yeah, so this is what it looks like on iOS. It shows you this dialog box, but iOS, Android does not show you this dialog box when it's listening. So it's important to add that label at the bottom just or some sort of indication that your app is actually listening for an NFC tag. And this is the a PR that I basically created um, in order to do that for the sample app. I briefly wanted to point out how you can make changes in the app. So all you got to do, first of all, because it uses Xamarin Forms, you have the ability to use uh, Hot Reload, which is amazing. And now if you want to make changes to any of the information that you write, you can just change it on line 182 of mainpage.xaml.cs. So this sample app is so easy to use. There's literally just this file and this file, and it's a total of 400 lines of code probably. And so if you want to change any of the text that you're adding to it, any of the URLs, all you got to do is change it over here. Very simple to use. So in the current on tag discovered function. Briefly, I want to talk about the differences. So as you saw, the, um, the dialog box is different on Android and iOS, but the, there's also a, a timeout that pops up as soon as if you don't cancel and it doesn't read an NFC tag, iOS will, uh, will time out pretty quick. Android doesn't really time out that quick. I wasn't able to test out exactly how long, but it was pretty long. And then backgrounding is also pretty different. So Apple only allows backgrounding for certain devices. So if you go onto the, the Apple website, it says, you know, only iPhone XS and later support background tag reading, which means that when the phone is locked or if the app is minimized, it will still read tags. However, it only reads the URL style of tags. And, you know, if you want to read the other styles of tags, you have to go into the app and you have to, uh, you know, be in the listening mode in order to read those other tags. Android, on the other hand, does not read tags when it's locked. It will, however, read tags any other time and of all kinds. If you want the Android tag, to open your app instead of using the default way of opening the um, handling the tag, you have to <clears throat> you have to force your app to do that by adding an intent filter, as you can see here. And then, if you want to enable NFC, you don't have to enable it on iOS. It is enabled by default on Android. You have to go to settings connection preferences, and then allow data exchange. Um, I do want to give a shout out to two people. When I was searching for NFC and Xamarin Forms, I did, obviously, uh, Frank Boer, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. I would probably still be looking for, uh, you know, resources out there. And then there was this video by Sean Sparkman, who explains this pretty well. And he also made it onto channel 9 with this video. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you guys have any questions, please reach, feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to share links uh, on how you can contact me below. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.